Hey everyone, my name is Adisha and welcome to Learn with Adisha. Ah, this is kind of loud. Anyways, we're learning about the solar system. It may seem simple, but this will be fun. I'm pretty sure it will be. Before takeoff, I just want to preface on this. Space is big. Really, really big. It took 36 years for the NASA spacecraft Voyager to reach the edge of our solar system. And that's only the solar system, not anything else, just the solar system. Ooh. I mean, some people could have died in that time. And actually, uh, some people did. Sad, though. I mean, 36 years is more than triple, nearly quadruple my age. Two, one, and let's go! Well, that's, uh, that's a weird spacecraft. Anyways, this is our solar system. Check it out. <clears throat> we can explore the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Yes, it's called Uranus. Why don't we call it anything else? I hate when people call it Uranus. We're going to get into all this later, but first, let's start at the core. Our Sun. Oof. We can always check things out over here. Ah, oh, man, that looks nice. What is it? Ah, prominence. A special solar phenomenon. Pretty cool, is it? Basically lava wheels. Cheese wheels, but much hotter. <laughs> Let's set an, an asteroid towards it. And, yep, just as expected, it instantly. Oh my lord! That is way too hot. That just vaporizes. What? Boom. Gone. Ah, that's what makes it so hot. The core is a sun of its own. Oof. Houston, that Oh! Why are you just going to stab yourself into the sun? Oh, my Lord. Whatever. Let's take you to the side. So here, up here, is the convective zone where convection currents come up. Down here is the radio radiative zone. And here is the core. The edge of the sun, as in the bright thing that you see during a solar eclipse, is called the corona. Yes, I know I'm referencing to a past pandemic. Don't make fun of me. Don't demonetize me. Don't talk about this in a comic in the comments. It's just how it is. And here's the core. As in center of the sun. Center of not a planet, but a star. Yes, it's a star. So you know how most people say that the sun is just a big burning ball of gas they are kind of right but the build a big burning ball of gas is the definition of a star yeah a star is just a big burning ball of gas i'm not lying don't make fun of me that's just the truth okay so what are these ah even the sun has sunburned These are actually pretty cool though. These are solar flares. Let's try making a sunspot. You can see here that we can easily make sunspots like right here. Sunspots are basically what happens when the sun just gets really cold and really dark. They're pretty cold and they're pretty dark.
No joke, that's the exact definition of a sunspot. Check it out, a solar flare, wow. Those things could be used as weapons. Well, the sun is used by literally everything on Earth. The sun dies, we all die. Yup, the sun is the power of all life. And it is the only power in our solar system. You might be saying, but Alicia, what about solar power plants and plants and animals and all those other stuff? Waves. Take that for example. Waves are created by winds. Winds are created by heat. Heat is generated by what? The sun. There. Solar panels. Harness the energy of the sun. Plants harness the energy of the sun. Animals harness the energy of plants. Carnivores harness the energy of animals. And us humans eat those animals who ate plants who use the sun to give themselves energy. There, if that's not proof enough for you, I don't know what is. Wow. Mercury sure does have a weak... Hmm, it sure does have a weak orbit. I mean, weak gravity, sorry. If you reminded me of that word, congrats. You're smart. Up here is the North Pole. Down here is the south pole and this line that you see doesn't actually exist in real life of course but it's called an axis some craters have names somehow i guess well let's see mercury surface let's try to throw rocks to form craters See that? Mercury has a thin atmosphere and it doesn't really pr protect a lot of me it from meteoroids. Small flying pieces of debris. That's basically the same thing that took out the dinos. Kind of. I guess. Because that's not the only thing that took out the dinos, I guess. Well, a meteoroid that passes through the atmosphere and hits the surface is called a meteorite. So, for example, that's a meteorite. This is a meteorite. This is a meteorite. This as well. Along with this and this and this. All of that are meteorites. <clears throat> now, let's check the temperature. Seems nice. And not that toasty, but uh, when you take it to the other side, I don't have to explain it to you. That's way too hot. Oof, sad snowman. Hey, wait, what even happened to that other snowman? Hmm, nothing happened, I guess, but that's not actually what happened, of course. Ooh, the snowman melts. So sad to see. Moving on, Venus. Ooh, this is the hottest planet in the solar system. What? You can't see anything here. Nothing. You can see nothing. Except for this caramel planet that's keeping on moving. Actually, that's the atmosphere. Pretty sure you were shocked to know that. Moving on to the inside, basically every single planet follows this, so don't be surprised if I skip some. Even Mercury. Here's the crust, the first actual layer of rock. Here's the upper mantle. The thing above the crust is the atmosphere. Here's the upper mantle, molten lower, lower man mantle. And the solid core, that liquidy part is just the outer core, but this inner part is the inner core.
which is squished together so hard that it's basically metal. Oh, and I almost forgot to show you the surface. Ooh, Venus's surface is filled with sulfur clouds, acid rain, and even metal snow? Huh, that's weird. How does metal snow even exist though? Ooh, that was crazy. Let's go on to Earth. Ah, yes. The actual planet of life. With the crust, solid inner core, liquid outer core, a partially mounted mantle, mantle a big crust which I'm recording this thing on. Hello. And the atmosphere, which is where I'm going soon. So don't be surprised if I stop uh, producing for a while. Well, there's not much we can do to, for this. But I think we should probably... Oh, wow. So this is how day and night works, huh? The side that's facing towards the Earth is day. But the side that's facing away is night. Nice. Oh, so this is how the axes work. Work. This is how the seasons work. The side that's tilted towards the sun is on summer, but the side that's tilted away has winter. Towards away. Towards away. Towards away. This is from the top. Okay. Keep, in, keep that in mind. So if you place a snowman down here, it'll be fine. If you place a can down there, it'll be fine. But if you place a snowman up... Oh, oops. If you place a can up here, it'll be fine. Water up here does not survive. It turns into... Uh, Mm, yes. Oh, astronaut poop. Get that out of the way. I don't want to see that. Unlike Earth, the moon has no atmosphere and no air. That's why you can't breathe on the moon. Common sense. Look at that buggy dance. Check that out. A shovel is exactly what they use. To ah, here's finally sound. A shovel is exactly what they use to dig up specimens of rocks. USA, Japan, Russia, India, China. I guess all of these are well countries that made it to the moon. And we've got the balloons. Putting a piano. Let's let it fall. Falls quite slowly, does it? Because of its weight. Now I have a small question for you. This is about gravity. Which one will fall first? A giant spaceship or a tiny rock? The answer? Both will fall at the same speed. It's a trick question. So if you answered either one of these answers, you'd be wrong. But if you answered trick question, thank God someone actually knows science now. Over here, it's not disastrously hot. In fact, it's disastrously cold. Ooh. Whoa! Well, let's take a look at the crust. Yep, crust. Solid inner core is right there. A liquid outer core is right there. And a partially molten mantle is right here. Bet you can see that already. 
Curiosity. Looks kind of cute, does she? So let's, uh, Curiosity is actually looking for signs of water on Mars. Basically a sign of life. Water equals basically life, I guess. But it's basically way too cold. Here's the asteroid belt, but there's not much for that. Going to Jupiter. Jupiter has a ton of moons. A ton of moons. Well, Jupiter is a gas giant, so if you think about standing on there, eh, get ready to be molten. Or cooled to death, I guess? Up here is a layer of hydrogen gas. No co no uh, crust. In here is a solid core. Here is liquid hydrogen. This outside area. And inside here, near the core, is liquid metallic hydrogen. And Jupiter has more than 60 moons, so that's a lot. Here's Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, and Io. Io's particularly a wild one. Whoa! What's going on here? This is crazy. The Great Red Spot, huh? Jupiter's Great Red Spot is a giant hurricane that is stormed for at least. 150 years using what they know about storms on earth scientists have come up with hypotheses about how the great red spot actually functions and works 150 years seems way longer than a, than a hurricane could actually go way way longer and trust me, hurricanes can last for one hour, two hours, three hours, but not 150 years. What? Let's check out Saturn. With its giant, beautiful rings, it's unimaginably awesome. Here's Titan, Rhea, Mimas and Enceladus. Oh yeah, and Saturn also has a butt ton of, of moons. It is also a gas giant. Hydrogen gas on the outside. A solid core on the inside. Liquid metallic hydrogen on the inside near the core. And liquid hydrogen outside of the core. And the liquid metallic hydrogen. Right, Saturn's rings. Well, all, well, all gas giants have rings. Saturn's are the biggest and the brightest. They're made of billions of pieces of ice, dust, and rocks of all different sizes. Let's just throw some ice towards this. Ooh, seems like some rocks got dislodged. Some rocks, seems nice. Even more got dislodged. And some space debris. Space dust, I guess. Now going to the cursed planet that no one likes to say the name if they're a teacher. Don't laugh at this. This is serious. Uranus. I hate this planet's name. I actually feel kind of sorry for it. Uranus. It sounds like your anus, but still, there's an alternate pronunciation. Uranus. And even there, you have to pronounce urine. Not okay. Scientists, who thought of this name? 
give me their soul and I'll torture them for all eternity. Until they change the name. Over here is Oberon and Titania. And look at that. Uranus is basically the only planet that spins on its side. And it causes extreme seasons because of that. As in the side that gets daylight never gets night. But the side that gets night is always night. Night equals always night, day equals always day. Sad. The only actually good place is right here. These are dark. Only one spacecraft, also known as NASA's Voyager 2, has ever made a close approach to Uranus. Only one. Crazy. Voyager 2 used radio waves to send thousands of images back to scientists on Earth. How might Voyager 2 have detected Uranus's rings? Probably because of the probably because of the the, the rocks. This isn't a gas giant. You may call this an ice giant. Ice giant. Yes, ice giant. I'm not joking. It's called an ice giant. Up here is hydrogen and helium gas, a slushy ocean, kind of. It feels slushy, okay? Feels, not is. Here's a diamond sea made out of literal diamonds, and here's a solid core. It's just solid. Last but not least, Neptune. Astronomers discovered Neptune, a gas giant, by observing Uranus. This is also kind of an ice giant, you could say. Uranus did not circle the sun as expected, so people thought the gravitational pull of another object was affecting its orbit. When they started looking for the other planet, they found Neptune. Basically, they ignored planet until then. Here's Triton and... Oh, we've got no other moons. There's still a lot, though. Trust me. We have another diamond sea. A solid core. A slushy ocean. And hydrogen and helium gas on the top. Now, zooming in... This entire thing is made out of diamonds. So if you went in deep enough and you could survive all the pressure, then you could basically have an infinite amount of riches. Neptune is filled with valuables. Even diamond gas. Crazy. Anyways, that's all, I guess. Wait a minute, there's still three more segments. We can compare volume over here, so let's see how big the sun, oh, oops, how big is the sun, oh, whatever, how big is, oh, wait, this thing isn't dragging, skip, whatever, so let's try the astronaut astronomical tape measure. Let's go far. Oh, dang. Saturn's right here. Cassini. Hello, Cassini. Okay, how far is Uranus here? Oh, there you are. Hi, Uranus. Hi. How far is Neptune? Oh, wow, that was far. Ooh. Pluto and New Horizons reach that far at its max. Maki Maki. Homea. 
they're dwarf planets. Just ignore them for now. I mean, this is gonna take some time. Eris. The distance, be the distances between planets actually get bigger as you move farther away from the sun, and their orbits get kind of crankier. Whoa! Ah, I think I know what this is. The Oort Cloud. We have to go even farther. Even farther. You guessed it. Even farther. Ah, here is Voyager 2 at 117 AUs. 117! This is pretty eerie. And we did it! 141 astronomical units gets us to Voyager 1! How far back was Voyager 2 even? Like 120? Oof, that's way too far back. Now let's see the sun's mass. We should assume that it's really big. The sun weighs quite a lot. Oh, the sun is heavier than basically any planet. Let's try Venus versus the sun. Oh, wow. Venus is pretty small compared to the sun. And now let's try the smallest planet compared to the sun. Sheesh. Quite not a lot. Right there is Mercury. That's Mercury. Right there. Now let's compare the biggest planet. And it just stays the same. Oh, wow. What about the second biggest one? Saturn. And what about Uranus? Neptune. Oof. The sun is actually the biggest thing in our solar system. Nothing in our solar system. Or basically out of that that still orbits the sun. Is bigger than the sun. Anyways. That's actually all for today. It's quite a lot to process but allow yourself to rewatch this video multiple times I don't care I don't want views all I want is for you to be educated educated thanks for watching and bye bye see you in the next one